Um, hard coded locators is pretty much bad. You should never have them in tests because now if a locator, if an element changes on the page and you need to change the locator, there might be 200 tests which use that same element or that same locator. It, it could be a lot of work um, and we definitely want to avoid that. It's also, as I demonstrated on the previous slides, pretty bad for readability. It also can make failure and error analysis difficult because if we have a whole suite of tests and we run them and you know, say there's several hundred tests and 20 of them fail, and we start looking through the errors to try to determine you know, what went wrong. Was it something broken in the test or something broken in the application? And the error message that you have basically says something like uh, slash slash div class alert slash li wasn't found. And so it can be very difficult without going down the call stack and trying to figure out exactly where you were in that test to piece together the context of what exactly happened to, uh, to cause that failure. Um, another thing that, uh, that this using the, um, the bare bones Selenium driver causes is, is it kind of ties our tests to the implementation and the syntax of the Selenium driver. <coughs> so this brings us to uh, pageness. And uh, the bottom line is that we need some sort of abstraction between our tests and the driver and the locators, the way that, it, that the driver interacts with the, with the elements. Um, I think that it's fairly logical to assume that the best way to do this is by using uh, pages and elements as the abstraction layer because that's essentially what we're concerned in, concerned with when we're testing applications. We're, we're really interacting with the pages and the elements on them. Um, <clears throat> there are a few ways to achieve this sort of abstraction. It seems like uh, the, the common approach is to, to just kind of abstract the locators away into some sort of a UI map or a, or a class which, which maps um, actual element names to element locators and then to actually leave the syntax of the, of the driver the same. So that like with the previous examples, instead of selenium.click and then the xpath, you would see selenium.click and then some sort of uh, reference to the xpath. We chose to take a little bit of a different path and <coughs> this was our target outcome. So, so this is where we, wanna, where we wanted to get to. <coughs> and it's a, it's a cleaner kind of a a neater um, API that uses uh, shared kind of externalized abstracted locators and it, it just feels more idiomatic. By reading this, I, I think it it's more of an object-oriented kind of approach to, uh, to telling the browser what to do and what to act on. Um, I, I want to note that, that this pattern pretty much came straight out of a framework that I saw called Taza, which is based around water. And water itself kind of uses an, more of an element-driven API, as well as, I guess, WebDriver does, too. Um, Taza took it a step farther by hiding the details of the element in these page classes. So this is what we want it to look like eventually. And the next few slides, I'll talk about how, how we're able to, to get to that point using the tools that we have. So the first thing we need to do is have a place uh, or a kind of a, um, a way, a convention for how to, how to actually describe a page. And this is how we ended up doing it. We have a sort of base page class, which provides a, a class level a class level method called element. So we can subclass that and call the, the element method in it here, just passing um, a symbol which uh, which uh, refers to the name of the field that we want to call it, and then followed by a locator. Here we're just using all IDs, but any one of those strings, those IDs could as, just as well be like a CSS locator, an XPath, or uh, one of Selenium's um, other uh, methods for locating items like link equals text or something. So that's how we define a page. <coughs> and this is what happens when we instantiate a page. If, if, we, if we create a new page object, it essentially gives us an object with all of these dynamically generated methods, one each corresponding to, um, to one of the elements that we defined when we were describing that page class. And as you can see by the method definitions here, if we invoke sign in page dot email field, what, ha what should happen is that it just returns us a new element with the attributes of, that we want, which is email field and then the corresponding locator. So <coughs> moving along here, um, this is after we've instantiated a page. So we have a page and we call them one of the element methods. This returns us an element object. And <coughs> the element object is really where the rubber hits the road. It's kind of, this is where we end up interacting with the driver. Um, this example might look a little bit confusing, but it's essentially uh, an instance of an object which has a couple element-specific attributes, which is here, in this case, a name and the locator. 
<coughs> and then you can define methods in it. And these methods are inherited from the base element class. So they're, they're kind of generic to all elements. All elements have these methods, but every element has its own unique name and locator. So <coughs> the way that this works, um, I, I should probably explain real quick this uh, method missing thing. Method missing is uh, a facility that Ruby provides, which basically is how an object, any object, handles a message that, that it receives that it doesn't know how to deal with. Now, by default, what happens is that this just raises like a no method found exception. So, um, for instance, if you have like a string object and you call, um, I don't know, like multiply on it or something, actually this isn't true. Well, if you call some obscure method that doesn't actually exist in that object, it'll, it'll fall down to the method missing, which tells it to raise an exception, which comes up the stack. But <coughs> one of the nice things about Ruby is that you can essentially overwrite any method that you want to at any level. So we're overwriting the method missing uh, method here of our, of our element objects to, uh, to do what we want, want it to do instead of raising an error. And <coughs> so if we, if we call a method on this, uh, on this element instance, for example, type, which is a Selenium command, by default, that element doesn't have a type method defined for it. So it's going to fall through to the method missing mechanism. And what happens here is that method missing receives the initial method that was called, in this case type, as well as any arguments that were passed to it. And from there, we can decide what to do with it. In this case, we just send it over to Selenium, along with, uh, <coughs> with this element instance's specific locator. So I, I hope I didn't lose too many people there, but essentially what this comes down to is a sort of abstraction or like a, a translation layer between our page elements and a, a regular old Ruby Selenium client driver. So the example here, looking at the, at the top line where we're calling a sign in page dot email field dot type, it actually translates to selenium dot type and then passes in its own locator. So essentially here, we're just we're getting for free <coughs> all of the selenium methods in our element objects. And <coughs> this results in, in this uh, pattern that I showed earlier, where you don't see any actual element locators in the code. You see the, the references to the element names and then the Selenium command tacked onto the end of it. Um, but <coughs> rather than passing the Selenium command to locator, it gets passed behind the scenes for you. So this is pretty cool because it, it makes uh, fairly clean test cases. Another example of, <coughs> of a, a small test script written with this approach. Um, the comments here help, but even without the comments, it's, it's fairly clear just scanning through it, kind of the context of where you're at in the application, which page you're interacting with and what elements you're, you're using. <coughs> so that's kind of the, the core um, foundation of, of our page object pattern. And I just want to show a, a couple kind of neat things that that leads to. The first one is that you can build custom methods in your element class. This is the same parent element class that I showed before with the method missing definition, which is kind of a catch-all. It just takes anything you send at it, it just tries to throw it to Selenium. But we can also define our own custom methods on um, on the element to, uh, to make life easier for people. For example, this first one, assert present, it's a pretty simple method. It just uh, essentially does an assertion that this element is present. But um, So now in our scripts, we can just call page.element.assertPresent, which is a very um, idiomatic, kind of a nice, natural way to, uh, to say that we want to make sure an element is there. Um, <coughs> similarly, like the click if present, you know, we could easily in our test script write if is element present, then you know, click it. But it's much uh, nicer to be able to just say element.click uh, of present. It's, uh, just, it's sort of a language thing, I guess, is what it comes down to. Mm -hmm. 